Hi, I'm Simon and this is my wife Kim and we like to help people transition into liveaboard lifestyle. Today we're going to provide you with a lifestyle update uh, as to what we've been doing since we've gotten to St. Martin. So if you've been watching us for a while, we are officially on our eighth year of uh, sailing, liveaboard cruisers. So. Yay! <laughs> and um, we've hit over 38,000 nautical miles now, so some achievements there. Some, yep, yeah, some achievements, <laughs> especially with lockdown. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We spent uh, the hurricane season in Grenada and then the lockdown happened and we spent, so we spent extra time there, but then we decided we were coming up to St. Martin, so we sailed up to St. Martin and on the way we had engine trouble and we had to take a detour into St. Lucia where we got it fixed and then we made our way up here to St. Martin. And that's where we are right now and it is super gusty yes. right now. So the main reason that we uh, we sailed up to St. Martin is because we can take paying guests here on our Britican experience. Whereas in Grenada, guests would have to come down and quarantine for a week or sometimes two weeks, depending on what was going on in Grenada at the time. Uh, whereas St. Martin, uh, Americans um, and other nationalities can fly into St. Martin with a negative PCR test and that's it. It's been fantastic because we've actually had two couples come on board with us um, already. And uh, it's been, worked perfect. I mean, they got in a plane, arrived, and it's just been like normal, actually. Aside from uh, getting our charter business back up and running, we did quite a few jobs when we first got here because St. Martin is uh, it's tax free and um, this is where like the big boat stores are and stuff. Um, so the first job that we did was we got 60 meters of new chain um, and that was really good because our old chain was making quite a mess on the, on the deck. Another big upgrade that we did was we got new Raymarine uh, navigation equipment, which is what we really need in a new AIS system. Hey, it's dangerous target. It's bedtime. That's, I it's think it's time for the crack. Okay. Cheers. Cheers to Cheers. new electronics. Cheers to new electronics. Our old system was about 12 to 13 years old. The lenses and all that were just, you couldn't read them anymore. They, um, they just started to go, the LCD mm -hmm. um, Pan panels. panels had just yeah. gone black and you couldn't read them. So that wasn't any good. So we came here because it was so much cheaper than the rest of the Caribbean. It was probably the same price as European prices and American prices. We replaced a new plotter, we replaced all the multifunctions, um, a new autopilot brain and everything so far, touch wood, and is it, working fantastic. An yeah. AIS too. Oh yes, an AIS, because our old AIS um, was transmitting but it was not receiving as much. And if you don't know what AIS is, it's a um, positioning software or system and it lets, uh, there's two different kinds. I think. Um, one that just transmits and shows other boats that you're around um, and one that you can see other boats. And so we've got the one where we can see boats and they can see us. Of course if it works. <laughs> and our old system would like turn off, turn on, like turn off and on like f five times in an hour. Now with the new system, much better, it stays on. <laughs> yeah, stays on. We had a guy come on and help us, a guy called Star, and he, he was a star, fantastic. If you have a proper plan on, on how to do the installation, the rest is pretty much straightforward, apart from a battle here and there as far as running wires. Yeah. Once you have the plan laid out, and then it's all plug and play after. And uh, we found out while he was working on it, he has his own YouTube channel, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I go on adventures, a wide variety of adventures on the island of St. Martin and I show my viewers how to go on adventures for themselves, whether it be hiking, scuba diving, snorkeling, spearfishing, mountain biking. If it's extreme and exciting, we do it. We go camping overnight, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you guys are going to be in St. Martin and looking for something interesting and off the beaten path, my channel is definitely worth checking out. Yeah, check it out. It's great. Aside from the Raymarine, we fixed the water pump that failed, um, well, it, it sprung a leak when we were trying to get to St. Martin and that's why we had to divert to St. Lucia. The mechanic in St. Lucia like 
just patched it up for us, but we were able to get the part into St. Martin. And our friend Tim came over, um, who's also a cruiser, he came over to help uh, Simon put it in. The amount of people that have laid on this floor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that one's on. And, and uh, it, it wasn't too hard actually. No, it was, it was really easy. And the reason why Tim helped us is because it we, he has a house here and we get all our stuff delivered there. So thanks Tim. So we got it on and we tested it and it was leaking. So trying everything, blah, 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 moving it around. Did it extra little bit of tightening on the, the nuts. Then we realized <coughs> on the second time it was leaking, but less. On the second time of checking all the boats, there's one that's really difficult to find. And I hadn't tightened it. <laughs> tightened it up, brilliant. So it's all working perfectly now and uh, for the next couple of days, weeks, we'll keep checking it, but I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be great. So it's fixed. But then, as we're running the engine, the next day, we had another leak. It's the box where the um, thermostat goes for the engine water and it was just leaking and it started dripping so um, I had to order a new one but to stop the dripping a friend of ours lent us some rubber gasket yeah, material. Yeah, Dirk, Dirk yeah. Moin. Dirk and Moin. Thanks Dirk. Thanks Dirk. <laughs> and then uh, Tim came over and showed us how to do it so that's going to be an interesting video I think we're going to show yeah. it to maybe later. Yeah, it was really cool to see them cre you know, make their own gasket which I didn't know, I mean I've heard of it before but it was nice to actually see it happen and then when they put it on it worked perfectly. Yeah. It's probably, we, we have the part um, we now, have the part but, now. But the other one's working so good why replace it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From a cosmetic perspective we upgraded our um, our, our seat covers. So these are all like Velcro down the back um, and I bought the fabric at Sailrite in America and had it shipped down and then a sailing and canvas company um, recreated the, the covers and they did a fantastic job and it really has brought the saloon back up to it. Back to, it up. Yeah, it just makes it look so much better. The other cosmetic thing um, that I did was our hatch screens. So how's the seats, new seats Kim? <laughs> Not here yet. They're not here yet. They forgot to put the numbers on them. And when we take the covers off, if they're not numbered, it will be a big puzzle trying to find out which is the right ones to go on. Yeah. So what are you actually doing now, Kim? I'm, I'm making um, a screen for one of the hatches. Do you, because we got a quote to replace our hatch. It's like a pole screen and it was $700. That was a cheap one. Yeah. The one that we want, the one that we really wanted was $1,800 for one screen. Yeah. and. Um, I have friends that have gotten some recently and they said that they're just, the, they're plastic and they're not very nice. So I've made Velcro on the inside and then put some webbing on the outside and um, I've glued on some Velcro to the top and I just think that, you know, it's taken me all day but I'd rather do this than spend a lot of money on something that's, you know, I'm not going to like anyway. Good. Let's let this plane go by. Yeah, I think it's oh, it's taking off. Yeah, okay, so we're we're right by the French airport here, and it's a small airport, but it's like little prop jobs come in here. Um, but it is amazing. The planes are landing like right, like right next to us. It's kind of cool. But we've got three really cool airports here. We've got the Saint Martin one, the famous one, where people hold on as yeah. the planes take off and you can swim in the beach while they land. And then um, St. Bart's has a pretty incredible airport too. Um, yeah. I think it's one of the most dangerous in the world. I'd say the top three or four, sorry, third or fourth most dangerous. Yeah. And apparently they just go over a hill. We're gonna we're going there in the next couple of days, so we're yeah. gonna uh, take some videos of that, I think. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh yes, guess what else, I forgot what else happened. Um, the day before, um, our guests arrived, or was it, was it the day before or was it hours before, I can't remember now. Um, we, had, we were running, making some water and suddenly we heard bang, I thought, ah, what's that, run down and switch the water maker off. And what had happened is the coupling has teeth between the pump and the motor. And what happened was it was an old one and just, just over time it just broke and it just sheared all the teeth off. The teeth were flying everywhere and 
he was going, I was thinking, oh no, what am I going to do? We've got the guests come in. And, but luckily, I remembered that um, I had a spare one. So, yeah. a lot of huffing and puffing and moving stuff around, and uh, half an hour later, we were making water again. Yeah. So, that was really lucky that we had that because yeah. I don't know what, we wouldn't have had time to go and get, go and get a new one or even order one in. Yeah, and the water uh, maker always scares me because it's a high pressure pump. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of cruisers are always a little slightly concerned it's going to blow up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it was fixed and now it's been working fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what about St. Martin? What do we think? Uh, we arrived on the Dutch side and we anchored right outside where Customs and Excise is. And, no, it's not Customs. It's Customs and Immigration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we anchored out there um, and it was a bit rolly. So like after two days, three days, we were like, we can't handle this anymore. We didn't want to go into the lagoon because we heard that, you know, it's a bit, I don't know, not, well, not so nice. It's not so nice because the water it stays there a lot. It's not free flowing water. Yeah. So it gets a little bit dirty. But because of being hardly anyone there, it was actually not too bad. Yeah, it wasn't too bad at all. Um, and it was flat calm, which was yes. really nice. And you now, interestingly, on the Dutch side, St. Martin is divided into two sides. There's the Dutch side, and then there's the French side. On the Dutch side, you have to pay $40 a week to, to be there, to anchor anywhere, or even go in a marina. You have to pay this $40 a week. Yeah. Now, what most cruisers do is they go to the Dutch side and they anchor in the lagoon because you've got two massive boat chandleries there. It's the Island Water World Superstore and the Budget Superstore. Yeah. So typically you go in there, get all your work done, and then you come out and then you book out and book into the French side where the beaches are less rolly and or the anchorages are less rolly and they're more picturesque yeah, too yeah. I would say. That was interesting, nice and easy coming through there, but when we come round this is the anchoring area and um, we had nothing under the keel <laughs> we had zero zero under the keel we're probably anchored in about 12 feet now um, but it is a little weird seeing land all the way around us because um, we're in the lagoon at the moment and um, the water doesn't look very clean I'm not going for a swim and we just used the water maker before we came in so I've now got two weeks before I need to do anything with that um, we're going to get some jobs done and hopefully be out within about a week, ten days. So, um, so that's what we did. We uh, we went into the lagoon, got some work done, and then we left. Um, went out of the lagoon, came round to the French side, booked in, booked out, booked out, booked in. <laughs> yeah, <a bit laughs> like that. and then anchored on the French side um, in Marigot Bay. So while we were in the lagoon, we were fortunate to meet two other boat kids and it was Halloween, so we decided to uh, go do a, a boat trick or treat. <laughs> and we went, because it's all famous for their uh, super mega yachts, so we went round and we were shouting and... Pick a treat! <laughs> there was a couple of guys cleaning this 270 foot mega yacht and he went, oh, hang on, he went away Two minutes later, he came with the biggest bag of candy, candy. or sweets, as yeah. we call them in England, and he threw them to Sienna. And Sienna had this big bag, and uh, luckily we uh, we all shared it between all the kids. But uh, it was just fantastic, and uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, and um, an ice cream shop had a mask like decorating competition so the kids were able to do that it was just great that everybody got to dress up and go around even though um you know it's still covid and yeah yeah um and sienna was really upset because we were supposed to be in grenada and the grenada has the best kids halloween party um but it was nice that we found some kids before halloween and got yeah. to go trick-or-treating yeah but i think she had a good time yeah yeah and then we had a good time because we found this bar where it has happy hour and it's one dollar a beer yeah. for two hours so it was a happy time for the adults as well yeah and we've subsequently frequented that bar quite a few times now yeah, just once or twice <laughs> if you come to st martin it's called the soggy dollar a yeah. Re really cool place and there's a dinghy dock so you just take your dinghy to it and speaking of making new friends um since we've got here there's been more and more boats arrive and more kid boats um so we've done quite a few excursions with the kid boats 
We have, um, we've watched the planes land. We have gone for walks. We have had a couple potlucks now. Yeah, yeah. We explored in an abandoned um, resort. Uh, I think my favorite was going to the top of the fort that's in Marico Bay. It's um, very, very French. Right. <laughs> and um, you just walk up to the top and the views are absolutely beautiful. Um, and our friend Elsino on Moyne, he did some drone footage while yeah. we were up there. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's just, just a beautiful place. And all of us stopped at the bakery, got some French baguettes and French goodies and had that up there and just enjoyed the company of other cruisers and kid folks. And um, Sienna has had her fair share of sleepovers too. So uh, yes. yes, every weekend. Can we have a sleepover? And of course you don't want to leave anybody out, so we end up with a bunch of girls. So here we all are. How was your sleepover? Good. There wasn't much sleeping, was the girls? No. What time did you get to sleep? Five. Five. And in between getting the jobs done, meeting new friends, seeing old friends, we've also done two Britican experiences, and so that means we haven't stayed in one place. We've no. been moving around and yeah. exploring which has been fantastic. Um, we've gone to Tintamar, which is this beautiful uh, deserted island. Uh, is it the north? It's on the east. The east east side. I need to look at a map and see where it's I am. Good job I do the navigating. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really amazing. As the sun sets, it, the whole, like, the rock face of the island turns this beautiful orange and yellow, and there's pinks and... Well, the beach is pink, isn't yeah. it? Because it's old coral. Yeah. So it's just stunningly beautiful. Uh, the beach is just so clear. The water is clear. It's, it's just stunning. Yeah. We've also been able to ha head over to St. Bart's, which is it's another French island, but it's not too far. It's about a... How, how it's 15 miles. Okay, yeah. F 15 miles away. And um, it's, it's not a difficult sail, but it's open ocean, which is nice, so our guests can see what it's like to to be you know completely out in the open um, but this island is it's just it's stunningly beautiful too and it it's where the rich and famous go <laughs> and it's, it's manicured there's super yachts everywhere um, all the trees oh it's it's really gusting you can I'm sure you can hear it um, all the trees are manicured um, you know the lawns are perfect every single restaurant is like outstanding oh, beautiful um, and you just watch the people go by because yeah. they they're all like their outfits must you know must be thousands of dollars and stuff but it's a really cool place to go and aside from people watching in the restaurants and stuff it's also um, like you can get up kind of high and look out over the anchorages and you can pick out your boat and you can there's there's rock like formations coming out of the water and stuff it's, it's great isn't it yeah it's but it it's not like the Caribbean when you walk along there. It's like being back in Europe. Yeah, the islands here or the anchorages here feel more Mediterranean than they do tropical Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. But especially in uh, St. Bart's, you think you're back in Lake Saint Tropez or somewhere. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So we've been fortunate to have two amazing uh, Britain experiences. The first one we had, um, after, well, since COVID. Since COVID was Justo and Valina and they have a boat in Florida so they just came out to get a little bit more experience, a little bit more confidence and uh, see what the cruising life is really like. The great thing about the British experience while you're looking at the lifestyle is also you're able to talk to us and that's what most people find the most useful you know they've got us for a week or ten days or whatever and the information that they ask us that we pass on we think it, they think is invaluable and uh, that's the great thing about it as well as not just learning about sailing and anchoring and boring balls and to do what it's just talk, having a good chat to us really yeah. isn't it and just living the life they're yeah. living the life with us and also asking questions along the way so yeah. it works out really well yeah and our second couple that have come out is rick and randy and they came down from virginia um, they already have a boat. They have a Hylus. 49. Yeah, Hylus 49. Um, similar to the previous couple, just wanted to come out, find out, you know, feel what the lifestyle is like, see if they think it's something for them. We had an absolute blast with both couples. Um, it's so great to be like up and running again. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because our daughter Sienna, she pulled me aside and she said, I really like having guests again. 
and yeah, I was like, oh, you know, that's great to hear. And she's like, I feel like I have purpose. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute for a 10 year old to say. Yeah. But yeah, so far it's been going really good. And, um, you know, we're watching the news here and we see that there's vaccines going out. Yeah. Um, In fact, my dad had his, his first part of the vaccine yesterday. Yeah, so his dad's over 80 years old, so In he's, the UK, yeah. Yeah, he's one of the first people to get it. Yep. Um, so we're all just, you know, we're sitting here trying to see if we can get people in in the meantime. So far it's working good. Mm -hmm. We have a family of five that arrived last night and we just met them last night and they come on the boat in yeah, an hour and 50 minutes, but we wish we wish you very well for in this new year. Yes. And uh, if you want to become a sailing cruiser and you want some help making your dreams come true, check us out. Yeah. Come visit us. Uh, come and join us. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Okay, so do look there. Are you sure that's right now? <laughs> we'll find out. So do that again. No, you that was fine. It was just like twenty decibels very loud. Wow, well, you showed me to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am getting so hot, I think I need to open a window. Yeah. Oh. I know. It's going to get windy. Yeah, it might be wind noise now, but uh, it's either that or it's wa it's watching us sweat to death. I don't know which, what's worse. <laughs> wind noise or watching us perspire. Okay.